slides. So uh, a lot of the information in that session informs what we're going to be talking about here. So I strongly encourage everyone to go back and and uh, listen into that recording if you have the chance. Um, this is not the last opportunity for this session. We're going to also be offering this at 9 a.m. tomorrow morning. So if you have anyone on your team, any colleagues in your firm that you think can benefit from this session and this educational opportunity, I strongly encourage you to pass that on to them. Those links are still open and registration is still available. Uh, one more thing I'd like to touch on before we uh, get going here is the Jeremiah and Buckley partnership and the technical resources that we have available here in the Northeast through Jeremiah's. Buckley and, and Jeremiah entered into a partnership uh, a little over a year ago now, and uh, I really can't say enough about the resources that we have available and, uh, and the engineering team at Jeremiah's. Larry, who will be presenting here today and on various topics um, tomorrow as well to finish out Jeremiah's University, and his engineering team are really one of the best technical resources or the best technical resource that uh, that I've seen on factory built duct systems and boiler breaching and vents and appliance vents. Uh, they can provide full engineering calcs to you. Uh, they can provide 3D drawings, Revit models. Um, if you logged on early enough, you saw a video that was looping and uh, you may have seen some industrial stacks in there as well. Jeremiah can perform the full structural analysis on those self-supporting stacks. Uh, so they really have a great engineering team behind them at the factory. I'm extremely proud of what Buckley and Jeremiah are offering this week. It's an in-depth engineering course on the sizing and application of venting systems and uh, and factory built duct systems for grease duct and, and various other applications. Uh, Buckley has been in the stacks and, and breaching business for a long time now and, and we really feel that uh, the technical side of the venting industry has been overlooked for, for quite some time and, and we're really happy to be able to provide this to uh, all of our engineers, contractors, everyone here in the Northeast. Uh, we do have a lot of people on the line here, so everyone is going to remain muted throughout the um, duration of Larry's presentation here, but I encourage, strongly encourage everyone, if a question comes up, use the chat feature. Uh, we will interrupt Larry, myself, or one of the other panelists we're not afraid to do so. We're here for you. Uh, we'll answer the question and then we'll move on. Um, please use that if you have questions. And uh, I think that's all I have to say. I'll hand it over to you, Larry, to get going. Thank you, Dean. Uh, please, please do uh, uh, raise your hand, uh, type out the questions. That's important. Um, it's always nice to have feedback. I'm going to uh, stop sharing my video and I'm going to uh, focus on the uh, the presentation the screen so I do hope to hear from you we also have uh, Alex Mosier our senior application engineer and uh, Michael Lucia our eastern regional manager uh, on the panelists so I'll be asking Michael and Alex at the end of each section to maybe uh, say uh, um, say something just so I know that everyone is still there uh, listening um, these these one-way webinars can be kind of sort of uh, lonely and difficult if uh, no responses back we Yesterday, uh, or uh, last couple of days, have, have talked about the, the first section, which is we did an intro to Jeremiah's, talking about the company. We covered the ANSI venting categories, uh, gas vents that goes with the uh, categorized appliance, and we uh, went through the NFPA 54 uh, common code violations and tables, and we wrapped up with non-categorized. If the appliance is not category one, two, three, or four, then it uses a uh, pressure stack. So that's that's some of the stuff that we already covered. And now we're going to be focusing on the ASHRAE chimney design equation. Um, we're actually going to size some common vented condensing boilers. We'll take a look at forced draft boiler stack sizing and, and, and then wrap up uh, this afternoon with fire rated vents and chimneys. So that's the uh, what we have for you um, 
just coming up right now. <coughs> there is um, some handouts that you should download. I should have mentioned that earlier. There is an internet link on the downloads uh, on each page, which is very important because we're going to be having you go. go. Hopefully, uh, everyone has a, a second or third screen that they can click on these and actually uh, get into uh, what you will see on my screen, a HTML program, which is actually the ASHRAE chimney design equation. And uh, this is what we'll be using to size up some flues uh, based upon what we learned already and then uh, what you're about to see some introductions to the uh, ASHRAE uh, equation. So make sure you, you download them. Uh, you should be able to click on the PDF files and uh, we'll get started with the equation right now. So the purpose of a lot of people have different reasons for the ASHRAE chimney design equation. What we want to talk about, the real purpose is the uh, the draft or the pressure you would actually measure at the appliance flue outlet with a manometer. So this first slide is kind of like an introduction. We, we say if you could take a stack and stretch from 5 to 50 feet, this is all the pressures that you would measure at the outlet of the heater. With a manometer, so that that's what is really what uh, everything boils down to with a proper chimney vent stack design is the pressures at the outlet in relationship to the uh, the atmospheric pressure inside the room. So you always want to make sure to have a negative on on a category one and never exceed the positive pressure as outlined in the IOM uh, with certain appliances. Um, we have a lot of uh, inputs that we use. We uh, we start out with. Um, the appliance type, which covers the type of fuel, is it gas or oil? The MBH input, uh, the CO2 percentage, which is adversely the excess air. If you take a look at this chart here from ASHRAE, uh, this is actually an excess air percentage chart. So um, typically, if, uh, if if a boiler fires at 20% excess air, you can follow this down and see that that's about 9.2% CO2. Uh, in the flue gases. So um, if something was atmospheric, like with a draft hood, that's 100% excess air. You do the calculation based upon 5.5% CO2. This is the CO2 on this side. So uh, this is some of the details that we'll be looking at. Um, of course, the flue gas temperature is something that matters because that uh, increases the buoyancy or the draft, also the actual CFM. The ambient temperature is important because uh, that's going to be uh, change the uh, draft characteristics, altitude is going to change the natural draft, and obviously the flue layout because you need to know, you know, where is the flue going? We need to know the vertical distances, the horizontal distances, what type of fittings is being used. It's always nice to get a sketch like this right here from engineers that says, you know, here, here's a schematic 30 feet vertical, uh, 10 feet horizontal, uh, 10 feet horizontal. It's always nice to have something all put, all put together so you can quickly and easily do the calculation uh, very quickly for the engineers. A couple other things I want to point out. It's important to know what type of um, fittings that you're using. And we call this boot tea, boot tea awareness. So some of the common manufacturers like HeatFab and Duravent, they have a 90 degree boot tee and the resistance of this is like a 90 straight T. And others, like Jeremiah's, we have these boot tees that are a combination of 45 degree elbow and a lateral tee put together. So when sizing on this side of it, you use a 45 degree elbow. When sizing on this side of the boot tee, you use a lateral tee. Much less resistance, almost half. So that's real important to realize what type of um, uh, fittings or manufacturer on the vent side you're using as well. So let's take a look at um, really what we're going to be focusing on is the results. So we're going to be focusing on three major results, which is the first is theoretical, how much buoyancy a stack is going to create. That's theoretical because you cannot measure this. We can only calculate this. Um, the second part is the pressure loss. So this is the pressure loss caused by the flue gases, the velocities, the fittings, and then the third or last part is the outlet pressure. That's the available pressure. This is what you measure with a manometer. So this is what uh, we want to talk about because when a when a uh, a stack first fires up, let's say that we're going to use this for the next next couple of pages. You have a one million BTU force draft appliance. 
it's a 10 foot tall stack. And um, when the stack is fired up, the draft is not there because the stack is cold. So when you first fire up the appliance, you're going to see a positive vent pressure. And then slowly, maybe in a couple seconds, the stack will be filled with hot flue gases and the buoyancy will start happening, the theoretical draft. And what will happen is uh, the, um, the, the difference of these two, the difference of these two right here will eventually happen. So again, the, the theoretical draft is the buoyancy created by the column a vertical column, the hot flue gases, the pressure loss is the uh, uh, pressure loss due to the uh, velocities, the resistance of the fittings. The difference of these two is what you actually measure with a manometer at the flue outlet. So let's take a look at this uh, on the uh, sheet. Hopefully uh, everyone can have a chance to open up the, um, the program on a second or third monitor. So we're looking at the first example. Um, I'm just going to change the input here to 1,000 MBH. We're using 8.5% CO2, about 25% excess air, 300 degree flue gas temperature, altitude zero. We go down to the uh, uh, exhaust input information. We have zero feet of horizontal, 10 feet of vertical and it's 10 inch diameter. I'll keep the stack cap in there. And what you're looking for after you calculate is again the draft, the theoretical draft is what's the most important part. The pressure loss, which is the second part of that equation. And then the difference of these two is what you would actually measure with the uh, manometer at the outlet. So I'm gonna calculate these inputs. And what we see is a theoretical draft of a 0.035. So that's kind of like a fan, it's like a blower. You're actually assisting the stack once it's heated up. So we actually show that as a minus on the equation. Pressure loss is minimal, 0 0.01. So the difference between these two is what you'd actually measure with the manometer once the stack is primed. It may take a couple seconds in this case. So when I close this, we see that the exact numbers that we just looked at is what is on the slide here. Theoretical draft. Static pressure loss minimal, do the math, that's what you'd measure at the outlet. So negative 04 is just about perfect for any appliance. So let's go to the next slide and take a look at what happens. Let me go back one, erase these. So we look at this, uh, this slide, the, uh, the theoretical draft is exactly the same because we didn't change the stack height. 10 feet, 10 feet, 10 feet. Um, the pressure loss is greater because we added a couple fittings and the five feet of horizontal. So now when you do the math, you see a positive vent pressure. What does that mean? Well, let's, first of all, let's go ahead and do this uh, on the calculation. Let me open this up again. Go back here. So what we've done is we changed we added five feet of horizontal here, and we added two straight T's. I'm gonna calculate this. So the draft did not change any. Theoretical draft is still a, a, a 0 0.05. The pressure loss increased a lot because of the added five feet in the uh, two 90 degree T's. So the difference of these two or what you'd measure with a manometer is a positive pressure. So let me uh, close this out here because what this means to us is that um, a positive pressure means if you have a, a barometric damper, the flue gases are going out the damper into the space. If the uh, appliance has a draft hood, you're spilling flue gases out into the space. So if it's a sealed system and it's designed to run at a slight negative, like a negative O2 is pretty common, what you've done is you just affected the combustion. You can imagine maybe a lean burning, uh, the, the burner's working too hard, not bringing enough combustion air into the system. So 
that's what we want to correct and that's what we take a look at shortly. Um, let's, let's keep on going here. We, uh, we looked at this calculation. Let's take the same heater and now go straight up 30 feet. So what we've done is we've went from 10 feet to 30 feet and now we see we have three times the draft, almost three times. Pressure loss is minimal. You do the math. Now you have too much negative pressure. Most uh, most appliances like to see like a negative 0.02 to negative 0.08, for example, is a, is a good range for a non-condensed uh, boiler stack. So you have too much negative. This means to correct it, you have to put a barometric damper in, and then all the air in the room is going up the stack to balance out the stack. Or if you have a draft hood, all the air in the room is going up the draft hood to balance out the stack. Or if you have neither, no draft control whatsoever, you can imagine that you have too much combustion going on. You're going to cause a lot of sooting and stuff like that. So you're going to have a bad combustion. You could see a flame out, for example, the flame, you can imagine the flame being lifted off the burner and having a flame out situation with too much negative. I'll skip going back and, and changing the uh, uh, this because we're going to, the next couple of slides, we'll actually be doing this also. So we're starting afresh with another, another heater. We're using 1000 MBH, and we're gonna show you what we do to help correct these situations. Uh, this heater is tested by the manufacturer with a 20 foot straight up stack. And by the way, every non-condensing heater is tested with either a 10 or 20 foot straight up vertical stack. This is tested with 20. So let's go ahead and put these inputs in um, the equation to get started. So I'm gonna get back here. And uh, I'll close out these older ones. So we're starting with a 1000 MBH appliance. We're using 8.5% CO2, 360. This is maybe a commercial tank water heater. We have zero feet of horizontal, 20 feet of vertical. The stack is eight inch diameter. I'm going to calculate this, and we see that we have a theoretical draft of a 0.11 minus the pressure loss, 0 0.07. The difference would be a, a slight negative, negative 04, which is ideal. So let me go ahead and uh, shut this and look back at the, uh, the presentation here. We do the calculation, uh, 20 feet of vertical creating that much draft. Uh, no lateral, just the vertical uh, tube is a 0.07 pressure loss, which you would measure at the outlet is perfect, a slight negative 04. So that's what we're trying to duplicate as we start to change this chimney layout based upon what's really uh, required at the job site. So the first look is that we're gonna add five feet of lateral in two straight hard 90 degree turns. So let me uh, get back into the program we just left. Here we're gonna, all we're gonna do is add five feet of horizontal and two straight hard 90 degree T's to the stack. We're gonna calculate here. Draft did not change any, we're still at a point one one. Pressure loss increased a lot because of these two hard 90 degree T's. Let's all just pretend that we have to use these hard 90's to get around some piping. Uh, no choice to use a less resist, a re resistive type fitting. The, uh, then the available draft, the difference is a positive. So that's an issue. We have to make that go back to a negative pressure somehow. So this is where we kind of stop and we have to make some decisions. Um, we like to talk to uh, folks in person when we're doing stuff like this because you know, something has to change to make this go back to a negative pressure. You need to somehow increase the draft, reduce the pressure loss to get this back to a negative pressure. Um, the other option is, is add a draft inducer or a power burner. That's something that we really don't wanna do. So um, typically, and we, I, I would prefer if everybody would just increase the stack height above the roof 20, 30 feet, Every stack is 30 feet above the roof. That would make me happy, but uh, architects are involved typically, right? So we can't do that. So 
uh, typically what happens is you change the diameter. You go from an eight inch diameter to a 10 inch diameter. There's actually an eight to 10 increase right there. And what happens is when you do that, you, you see that the natural draft stays the same because it's still a 20 foot tall stack, but the pressure loss decreases a lot because of the larger diameter. So now the difference, which you'd measure at the outlet, would be exactly like that eight inch diameter stack going straight vertical. So let's just go ahead and do this on the same calculation here. Uh, let me go back. Here we had, the, that's not it. Here the calculation was shown positive, positive 0.07. I could actually do this in steps. Let's try a nine inch diameter. Um, it's just barely neutral, we want that to be negative. Let's change it to 10, 10 inch diameter. Now the pressure loss is less than the draft. So we have a slight negative measured at the outlet. It's really that easy. That's what we take a look at on uh, every stack system we, we, we look at. Um, let's keep on going with this. Let's say that we only had a 10 foot vertical stack to work with. Maybe it's a parapet or maybe a, a short mechanic room on, on, the, on the top of the roof. Architect didn't want the stack to go more than two or three feet above the top of the, uh, of the utility shed. So we're basically looking at 10 feet. We're back to a positive vent pressure, even at the 10 inch diameter. So what do we do? And by the way, that's about half the draft. Went from a 0.11 to a 0.05 draft, so that's one of the reasons why the, uh, the pressure is back to positive. We increase the diameter. We go from 12. We actually go from 8-inch diameter to 12-inch di di diameter at the outlet. And what we've done is we've exactly almost duplicated the stack going straight up 8-inch diameter, um, 20 feet. So we're back to perfect to the situation here. So this is really what we're, uh, we're looking at. That's why the uh, the systems are so important to, to realize what the different uh, aspects of the natural drive pressure loss and outlet pressure is. I didn't mention this, but probably uh, most important is, it, is to realize that this, this is a steady state equation. So what we're looking at is a steady state equation where the natural draft is has the stack all heated up and it's promoting draft because what happens when this appliance first fires up you're not going to have this natural draft. All you will have is this pressure loss. So realistically, you can you can imagine this heater firing up. It sees a 0 0.03 positive, and then slowly, as the stack starts to heat up, you start having the natural draft, and you end up after a couple seconds with the negative O2. Now I mentioned just a couple seconds. We're actually seeing some stack systems take minutes to heat up. Some will never heat up if you look at that less than 200 feet per minute velocity. So if you're under 200 feet per minute, you're not, you don't have enough flue gases for the volume of the area to, to ever heat the stack up to promote a natural draft. That's one of the reasons we always look back at the National Fuel Gas Code and, and think about some of the aspects of that that we did on the first session. Now, I know we don't ever see anything like that. You could do the calculation. You're gonna see that it's a, a neutral pressure. So you change the calculation to a larger diameter. And someone would think that 14 inch is fine, but we actually do not do this because we just increase more than two diameters. The crazy thing about this steady state equation, it's not a simulation, it's a steady state snapshot. You could, you could type into the equation 1,000 feet horizontal with a 10 feet vertical, and it's gonna give you an answer. So just keep in mind, this is a steady state equation. It doesn't count for modulation. Uh, flue gas um, temperature loss, uh, the velocity loss. So that's uh, that's real important to, to realize that. It's a great tool to get some snapshots and to always make sure within a certain range, but it's not it's not a simulation type program at all. So um, keep in mind, I, I did mention that every appliance manufacturer, no matter if it's a 30,000 BTU heater to a, a 10 million BTU four strap boiler, they all uh, list and test their equipment with a dedicated vertical stack. 
So what happens when you start manifolding the appliances together? This is when you start have to be thinking about you know, what's re really going on in the system. How many appliances are firing at any given time? Uh, it's pretty easy though, but uh, what we typically look at is the worst case would be all appliances at high fire and the stack is cold. If that's even possible, that would be the highest positive pressure. Worst case, you have one appliance on and the stack is hot, that would be the most negative. So what we have is a range of a negative 0.18 to a positive 0.166, which is very possible. But if we fall within the guidelines of the National Fuel Gas Code, realistically, it's gonna be more like a hot stack with minimum fire, and probably more like uh, the stack is going to be warm. So you're going to be see something like this range right here, as long as you don't have too much horizontal. But again, the reason we think about the National Fuel Gas Codes too much horizontals, uh, longer priming periods, it may it never it may never be primed. So we got to think about that. So what we come up with is a good snapshot of um, a range of draft pressures that we got to make sure is acceptable to the uh, the equipment that you're submitting to us to, to size up. So we're, we're looking at some good examples here next. Um, Michael uh, did, or Alex, did I forget to mention anything on the first uh, section here? And I would appreciate. Um, oh, Larry, I think you covered it pretty good. Thank you. Um, so let's look at um, common venting of condensing boilers. That's probably what we're doing most of these days. Uh, you know, condensing boilers have taken over the market. You're seeing uh, multiple boilers used in systems and it seems like everybody want to have, wants to have one stack going through the roof, which makes sense. So there's a couple of things we need to be uh, talking about first. We only use double wall systems when we combine vent condensing boilers. Why? We want to keep the flue gases as warm as possible. The flue gases aren't that hot, maybe only 200, 300 degrees, but we want to make sure that uh, the flue gases have a, ten a tendency to do their job to create buoyancy. And that's why we actually use fiber a lot of times when we do common venting of condensing appliances. Fiber insulated because again, we want to keep the flue gases as hot as possible to promote draft, to promote that natural draft effect. We want to think about um, never using straight T's. We, we want to make sure that we're using uh, lateral T's or, or the Jeremiah style of boot T's always. Um, you don't want, uh, we have higher velocities in condensing water stacks than we do with uh, atmospheric or non-condensing. So we want to make sure we have uh, the smooth radius turns when, when possible. We've got to think about some of the accessories needed. For example, you got to have a lot of drains. You're going to have a ton of condensation when you have a larger diameter uh, stack than the connectors. So you got to think about drains. You got to think about um, some uh, things like um, making sure that we're always within the, within the allowable um, pressure that the appliance manufacturer has, has stated. So um, let's uh, also you got to think about the flue gas recirculation. So let's say that this appliance, this is boiler one, this is boiler two, fires and the stack is cold, flue gases will go back down in boiler two. So you got to think about ways to prevent that every time you do a condensing uh, appliance manufacture, because quite honestly, uh, lower flue gas temperatures, longer time to prime the stack. Uh, so you gotta be thinking about um, on off dampers in every connector. So this, this is what we use. Part of the handouts was data sheets on these dampers. We have a, a nice on off damper that we use uh, to prevent backflow of flue gases. These dampers have a Viton seal. So it prevents flue gases from passing through it. Uh, then if the, uh, if the if the stack is going to be too tall to where it drafts too much on its own when the appliances are at low fire, we have a modulating option which, which, which will actually control the draft at the same time. So again, we always include these as part of the sizing. The, uh, these are sometimes included with the, uh, uh, the, the boiler manufacturers. So um, if we're doing a sizing for a specific uh, brand, we know if they include these or not. Uh, sometimes they may include these, but they require this one 
So we would uh, say, look, we're quoting this one, we're including this one, so make sure they don't include that because that would be a redundant um, waste of money there. So um, also a lot of drains, we make sure that the drain sections, there's always a, a drain above these uh, uh, dampers that will condensate, will drain out, so you're not affecting the uh, Viton seal uh, longevity of that. So we wanna make sure there's a, there's a lifetime type of uh, seal with the condensate being dripped out on the sides. So we're gonna actually gonna uh, quickly jump into uh, doing some sizing calculations. We have several examples to look at. We're gonna start with two 1 million BTU crest uh, boilers. So we have 1 million BTU each. These have a six inch flue outlet diameter. Uh, we know that we have to maintain this range plus or minus a quarter inch water column. I want to keep in mind that this 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 example is just for presentation purposes. So we we really can't use these numbers uh, for other uh, you know, future work. It's all based upon the building uh, temperatures and, and and stuff like that. So uh, make sure that you you do recognize that we are are telling folks that this is uh, for presenting only. Make sure to always have the uh, the chimney designer provide the right calculations. So we're actually going to uh, do the calculation. And what we do is we split the system up into the connectors. And then we do the, the common stack sizing. So the connector would be this right here. That's a connector. I'll put a C there for, or just spell out connector. This is also the connector right here. So the connector in this case would be uh, six feet of vertical. and uh, just the 45 degree elbow, the entrance of the boot team. And then we take a look at doing the common stack sizing, which is this entire portion here. We we actually put the numbers in here so that you actually have these sheets um, on the handouts so we can kind of look at this. So let's get started. I, I got some little cheat sheets here on the side I can take a look at. Um, let me get into the uh, equation. Okay, so we're looking at the connectors first. That's 1000 MBH. In this case, we're using 9.3% CO2 with a 190 degree flue gas temperature. There's no horizontal on the vertical connectors total chimney height of six feet just for the connector. We have a 45 degree elbow, which is, which is the entry of our boot tee before it gets into the horizontal manifold. Um, we actually have to put a resistance for that damper. We, we use a 0.5 resistance factor, K factor, no stack cap in this system. And we're gonna use a six inch diameter outlet. So I'm gonna calculate this. We see a couple of numbers that we always look at. The theoretical draft, 0 0.02. The pressure loss, 0.1. We don't care about the difference because we wanna add this up. So the first step would be uh, if we remember that 0 0.02 and 0 0.1, uh, that should match up with some, that should match up to what we, yeah, 0 0.02 of draft, 0.1 of pressure loss, so we're good there. Let's go back to the calculation page. And now we're looking at the common vent system, so we're using 2000 MBH. Total horizontal, the entire stack system. I'm including the, the last connector Horizontal is one, two, three, four, four, 20 feet of horizontal. From the manifold to the termination is 25 feet of vertical. You have the one lateral T uh, entry at the base of the stack. You have one there and you have the, the, we put two in here because one's the, the common point and the second would be at the, at the base of the stack that uses a 45 degree uh, turn to go vertical. We actually have two 90 degree elbows in that portion. I'm going to change the resistance factor of that damper, take that out. 
I'm gonna keep the diameter at six. So theoretically, what we just did is that we sized, we're gonna do a calculation based upon the diameter right here at six inch diameter. So I'm gonna keep it at six inch diameter here. I'm gonna do the calculation. You see that we increased the theoretical draft a lot, 0.07, but we uh, they look at the pressure loss. The pressure loss alone in that six inch diameter com common is 1.69. So we really need to back, uh, back off on the diameters to make it go a lot less than a quarter inch positive. So we start increasing the diameter. Let's first of all try eight inch. We're still above uh, a quarter inch. Here we go up to 10 inch diameter. There at 10 inch diameter, the pressure loss is only a 0.15. So we go back to the um, uh, to the sheet and we can plug in these diameters to see that uh, the 10 inch diameter common, the pressure loss was a 0.18, pressure loss on the connector 0.1. So the sum of these two is the highest possible pressure, even if, even if the stack is cold. Um, the highest possible negative would be maybe at low fire. You have a, a, a 0.02 on the connector plus a 0.07 of draft. The sum of these two is negative 09. So we know right away that just with a quick snapshot, we have a range of a, a negative 09 to a positive 0.19 at worst case. We're well within the allowable pressures of the appliance. No reason to add any sort of uh, 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 overdraft damper. Just use a standard on-off damper that comes with the boiler. Um, we're good to go. Uh, theoretically, um, you're seeing the. Oh, by the way, I should comment. Uh, let's see here. The posit. The, the this was this was with the draft being subtracted out. So we actually have a, pos a possible positive pressure of a 0.28. But uh, what's the chance of both of these boilers firing at high fire immediately at the same time? Um, you're not going to see that on any, uh, any condensing boiler setup. Let's go back and just look at this one page real quick. I want to show you, uh, I mentioned that the highest possible negative is a 0 0.09 right here. Let's go back and see what happens at low fire on this uh, uh, on this calculation here. So this is uh, this is the setup. This is the common stack, 20 feet of horizontal, 25 feet of vertical. And we have a 10 inch diameter, well within the range. And let's say that uh, one of these boilers could fire at uh, 200 MBH low fire. And we'll do the calculation. And we see that on this page, just the, the uh, vertical stack alone, you got a 0.07 theoretical draft. You don't have any pressure loss because the velocities are so low, so we're not, calcul not calculating. So we basically have a, a possible negative 07. That's why we look at the draft numbers only. That is the highest possible negative you could uh, typically have. Now we could go through and, and start looking at maybe some larger equipment. We have um, two 1.5 million. So now we're sizing uh, the connectors. The connector would be here and here, same connector. Uh, we're using the outlet diameter, which is six inch diameter. So you basically come up with six inch diameter. Uh, 0.3 pressure drop draft is a 0.03. And then you look at doing the common stack, which we, we size everything, all the horizontal. You do this portion then on the calculation. And that's the numbers that go here. You adjust the multiplier or you adjust the diameters until you're well within the range. So in this case, we ended up with a 10 inch diameter to have a pressure loss of a 0.47. So you add these two pressure losses together. Uh, that's what you get the maximum right here without the draft. Um, so here's the range. 
So we always got to have that available. Uh, this manufacturer publishes the range inside their IOM manual. It's pretty easy to actually publish the uh, the CO2 percentages to you. So uh, sometimes uh, manufacturers do that. Sometimes they don't. Uh, we always uh, have um, our own uh, documentations that we use anyway. So um, we can keep on going and do look at more examples. This is a uh, three uh, Crest boilers. We got boiler one, two, uh, three. Again, we're sizing the connectors. We're sizing all these connectors. We see that as, as being the same calculation. You come up with a 12 inch diameter. You do the calculation. You see there's a 0 0.08 pressure loss, 0 0.02 draft. And then we size the common. That's this portion right here. Entire horizontal, that's the common. That's when we do, we, we chose a 22 inch diameter because the pressure loss was just under a 0.2. By the time you look at adding the draft in place, you're looking at a range of when the stack is primed a negative 09 to a positive 0.19. Again, you could say that if it's possible for all three appliances to fire at the same time into a cold stack, a 0.28 is theoretically possible, but we're not going to we know that's not going to be the case. These boilers will start up one at a time. And it doesn't matter the size. This, this is a 30,000 uh, 30, um, uh, 30, MBH input uh, system. Uh, uh, this is a Fulton example. Uh, they, they publish uh, 0.1 positive to 0 0.01, 0 .0 0 .1, um, negative. So in a case like this, we do the calculations. All this horizontal and vertical is the connectors. We come up with the diameter of the outlet with the staggered pressure loss, the theoretical draft for the connectors. We size the entire common system here. That's when we come up with the 28 inch to have a 0.48. So when we add these together, Highest possible, even without the draft, is a 0.89. With draft, 0.78. The maximum amount of possible negative is a, is a negative 0.1 because of the a theoretical draft of the vertical common and the theoretical draft of the um, connector. So this is important. We know that it's possible that this to, to be more negative than what the manufacturer provide, uh, desires. So in this case, the dampers that we put in each connector will not only be on off, but also be uh, modulating to make sure that we never get below a 0.1 negative under any situation. So that's when we always look at the draft because we decide if we're gonna put the modulating on off dampers or just the on off dampers in place. Uh, just to quickly review, um, see Michael, did I cover all aspects of the common vent sizing there? I think you went over it pretty well, Larry. <clears throat> I would say right. you covered it, all of it. All right, so just keep in mind that we need to stop the uh, flue gas recirculation. We use dampers. Um, if, if someone, um, there's other uh, things available. Some manufacturers, they say that they put a damper on the inlet and that, that shuts off the appliance. If they want to be responsible, that's fine. They can remove the dampers off our uh, proposals. Uh, some manufacturers will keep the combustion air fan on. I, I think that's a waste with the electricity. So again, the, it, it, we always put the dampers in our systems if they don't come with a boiler, and we do that automatically just to make sure that um, everyone's covered to make sure you have no flue gas recirculation. We always need to know the allowable pressure. Don't um, don't be concerned about um, not having that information. Just get to Buckley and Jeremiah's, the manufacturer and the model number, the basis of design, and we will gladly do the calculations based upon what we already know about the appliance. Um, I think it's important to point out that, uh, you know, obviously Jeremiah's does not make boilers and water heaters, but Buckley does not represent boilers and water heaters. So there's no, uh, there's no reason why you can't throw any appliance, any boiler manufacturer model at Buckley because they're not in competition, uh, and we don't, uh, you know, prefer one manufacturer over the other at all. 
we're just doing the proper sizing based upon the, uh, the manufacturer's requirements. So let's, uh, let's take a quick look at force draft. So if the appliance is non-condensing, it could be, and if it's non-categorized, that's what we call force draft. Again, that's the UL 103 requirement. We get into a different UL requirement. Um, there's, basically, there's many possibilities here. Um, the reason being is that these non-categorized appliances or force draft appliances, you can put any type of burner you want typically on these boilers. It could be a highly modulating burner. It could be something that could be very easily tuned for a very minimal um, uh, excess air. Um, you could, I know that most of these boilers can easily be tuned from eight to 10% excess air. That's that's uh, 35 to 10% excess air. And that's, that's done that reason so you can balance the stack out uh, when you start the boilers up. So we wanna make sure to know that there's many possibilities and that we'll use worst case when we do size up these systems to make sure the stack has the capacity. Typically, uh, plus or minus a tenth of an inch is, is perfectly fine for all these four strap boilers. Some four strap boilers actually require a tenth of an inch, inch inside the combustion chamber. So we, uh, we typically size the system for balanced draft. That means that the, the pressure loss equals the available draft. So it's just a balanced draft system. And we can take a look at that in a minute. Um, keep in mind that with force draft appliances, typically barometric dampers are used. We got to make sure that we follow the NFPA guidelines. For example, if you have a 100 feet of horizontal with only 50 feet of vertical, we know that that does not meet NFPA. We would never ever put a barometric damper back at the end of that 100 foot, foot run. You're opening the stack up to the building. We got to make sure that every, everything's on the flow vertically no, as the NFPA um, common code in the tables allow. Uh, there's also options for uh, inline um, dampers. The dampers I just showed you that we use for condensing, we use the same dampers on force draft appliances. The, uh, the Viton seal is removed, and then you have basically a high temperature damper good for uh, 1,000 degrees continuous, the UL 103 requirement. So we can take a look at this. We can uh, go ahead and size this uh, force draft appliance up. We have the connectors right here. So if you would plug into the connectors, a four foot rise with the 45 degree elbow using 8,400 MBH and a 20 inch diameter outlet into the calculation, you're gonna see that a 20 inch diameter outlet will have a, just a slight uh, pressure loss and just a very slight amount of draft. Basically, that's the best balanced draft. They cancel each out. Amazing. That's why maybe the outlet is 20 inch diameter. And then the second step would be to size the total common all the way through, which we have 30 feet of horizontal, a 60 foot vertical stack going this way. That's where we sized up to another balanced draft situation where the pressure loss is a, we chose 28 inch because the pressure loss is a 0.27. The theoretical draft is actually higher than that. So you can do the math of the connectors plus the common. You see that the pressure losses here, if the stack was cold, would actually be a 0.29. But in this case, we have, no, it's, we have half of the distance horizontal. We're well, well, well within the NFPA guidelines. So we would probably ignore this and actually account for the draft. So you'd have a negative 0.05 at high fire with the stack warm. And then at low fire, we say these boilers can get down, modulate down, again, it's up to the burner. Uh, you could get down to a negative 0.34 at 10% firing rate. So you know, very likely this, this, this will need some sort of draft control on the system because at low fire, you're gonna to have too much negative and that's gonna be affecting the combustion of the appliance. We would actually recommend a draft control in a situation like this if nothing was given to us otherwise. So just a quick review, um, we can fine tune any sizing, even if it's forced draft, if you really wanna get into the manufacturer model, looking at the uh, the burner used, 
um, but uh, it, it's 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 not as critical as condensing because condensed appliances clearly have uh, the requirements because of the categorization and the testing they go through on the draft range. So you're going to see that more and more appliances, even the forced draft appliances, as we get into low NOx, draft is becoming a, a very particular uh, issue. But uh, again, typically plus or minus 0.1, we're seeing as a, as a good place to start with forced draft appliances. Uh, Dean and Michael, I can't I can't believe no one's uh, asking questions. I must be very thorough on this. <laughs> um, we're going to wrap up. Well, Larry. Okay, like, I appreciate that. Um, we're going to wrap things up with just taking a quick review at new uh, fire rated chimney options. These are these are new options available. Uh, uh, some of us manufacturers are, are looking at, at this and already started it. Basically, I want you everyone to know that there's an ISO 6944 standard out there that um, some of us are being tested and listed to. So this means that we can actually take a UL103 chimney and or maybe a 20, uh, 2561, which is a high temperature chimney, or even special gas vent, a type B gas vent, type L vent, and we can actually apply a fire rated two hour assembly label to these products. It is heavily insulated. It's a three and a quarter inch thick insulation so it's heavy insulated that's kind of nice because you're always going to have um, man safe skin skin temperatures guaranteed but it's uh, heavily insulated and it actually can replace a fire shaft so uh, products may seem expensive but the cost of only putting the fire stop in uh, that far outweighs in some as aspects of having a fire rated uh, shaft going through a building just for the vent system uh, we, we do like using the uh, the on one uh, there's the slides we all in one uh, FL system we talked about the stainless steel being 444 stainless steel inner which is good for condensing non-condensing uh, so it's the perfect type of steel to use um, so we do I mentioned the 444 there uh, you, you automatically get the high pressure rating with a product like this we did talk about the overlapping inner so this is the v-band connection with the overlapping inner that has the same it's the same inner pipe as up here so it's impossible to leak with the proper um, slope or the vertical stack. And again, the entire system is stainless steel uh, maintenance free on the systems. Huge potential money savings by having a, uh, a, a fire rated uh, duct system versus one that's not fire rated. So that's why, uh, again, you're going to see more and more manufacturers following our lead to get that ISO uh, 6944. What I'd like to do is, uh, end up with a quick uh, a go through about a, a, a four or five minute go through on just all the services that the engineering services that we do provide at Jeremiah's again contact Buckley but you actually uh, had a chance to witness some of the static pressure calculations we're actually doing so we have guaranteed vent pressure calculations uh, we common vent condensing appliances this is exactly what we just looked at um, so uh, we use the on off dampers so you're actually getting to see a little bit of what we're doing firsthand. The first part of this uh, series, we looked at the um, sizing handbook with the vent tables. So you know what we're doing behind the scenes all the time because the uh, the categories two, three, and four are relevant rules of thumb. We always look at the vent codes for that. Um, we do all the quotations. We have uh, uh, some specific software made by Vent Bomb, Vent BOM. And uh, this provides nice uh, schematic layouts for the Buckley sales team to easily, quickly give maybe the engineer a budget price or even give them uh, give the contractors a firm price. Once we uh, acquire the job with a purchase order, uh, or if we're working with an engineer for details, we provide 2D AutoCAD designs. So this is a 2D that we like to put the backdrop of the implants on the plans. Um, we, we sometimes call this phase when we're doing a big one right now for some people out in Seattle where we're looking at uh, two routings that they're looking at uh, trying to determine. Uh, 3D is becoming mo most popular. So our native is SolidWorks because we're a manufacturer. SolidWorks is used throughout the uh, manufacturing process. And uh, that's perfect for um, exporting to Revit, uh, 3D AutoCAD, Inventor, so we do, we're doing a lot of uh, details with Revit designs 
uh, passing back and forth from the uh, the contractors to the uh, to our shop. Um, we do a lot of engineered chimney liners, so we do the static calculations to see to make sure that the stack uh, the chimney may or may not need to be uh, uh, supported or guided on the inside. Right now we're doing a 190 foot tall chimney liner that is totally freestanding from the base. As, a, as they drop the, uh, the line or down the chimney, um, there's no reason to put guides out to, uh, to guide it. So we, it's pretty unlimited with some of the stuff we can do. Um, when needed, we do the, uh, the finite analysis. This happens to be an engine exhaust enclosure for a data center. So what we did is we're proven to the data center owner that we're extending the exhaust system to get away from the building. And we're actually providing these uh, structural stainless steel stands as part of the scope. And so we did the FEAs and, and uh, CFDs to make sure that we're not putting too much pressure uh, back on the, um, the enclosure itself at high wind speeds. We also like to do a, a lot of cantilevers. We don't like guy wires. Guy wires require maintenance. Our systems are maintenance free. So we, uh, we designed this, uh, this cantilever here to keep, get these stacks to go 25 feet freestanding in the air without any maintenance. This is a simple stainless steel cantilever attached to the building. The stacks will attach to that. So what's keeping the stack elevated is outside the flue gases entirely. Similar, we have these mass systems. This is an example of a 90 foot tall uh, system where we designed this mast in three sections. So we have uh, three hot dip galvanized tubular sections, pre-engineered, uh, pre-manufactured, uh, bolted together in the field. And then you have the low cost all stainless steel uh, stack going up the middle that again is outside the, the portion of the system that leaves um, the system freestanding. So that's what we had uh, for you on the second part of the series. I invite Dean to come back, please. Um, to uh, thank everyone for us. Thanks, Larry. Dean, look like you've been sleeping. Yeah, yeah, I was, I was taking a little nap. No, no, <laughs> that, that was great. Thank you, Larry, and and thanks everyone for joining us today. And uh, you know, again, we're we're providing this session again tomorrow morning at um, at 9 a.m. So if you have anyone on your team that you think could benefit from this, uh, please forward that invitation to them. The uh, registration is still open and uh, you know we're, we're welcoming people uh, for registration pretty much right up until the 9 a.m. time slot. Uh, we also have two sessions available tomorrow for uh, grease duct and other factory built duct systems. Uh, so if you haven't signed up for those, that registration is still open as well. And uh, um, you see from, from this presentation, the amount of engineering support that we can provide. So please reach out to us. We're, we're here for you and to help on your projects when it comes to these venting systems. And uh, with that, I think uh, we're good for the day. All right, everyone, thank you for attending. We hope to hear from you. Uh, thank you, Dean, luckily. You Thanks. guys have a nice afternoon, stay safe.